After the original Star Wars trilogy concluded, the saga continued with two TV movies released over the course of two years that, while often overlooked, now remain fascinating installments in the overall franchise. Decades after they originally aired, it's time to talk about the Ewok adventures. In 1983, Star Wars seemingly ended its story with Return of the Jedi, the third film in the original trilogy, which saw the defeat of Darth Vader and the Emperor and the triumph of the Rebel Alliance. Though George Lucas's prequel films wouldn't actually come along for more than a decade, he still wanted to continue telling Star Wars stories in some form. This started with Ewoks, the furry creatures from Return of the Jedi, and what was initially going to be an Ewok holiday special for TV. As discussions about the Ewok story went on, the story expanded to feature length, and the name was changed from a holiday theme to the Ewok Adventure, in order to avoid associations with the infamous Star Wars holiday special from 1978. Eventually known as Caravan of Courage, an Ewok adventure, the first film was shot in the California Redwood Forest near Skywalker Ranch and premiered on ABC in November of 1984. At the time the first Ewok adventure was conceived, the creatures were only known for their appearance in Return of the Jedi, and Lucas and company wanted to keep the story standalone. As a result, the first film contains very few of the hallmarks we associate with Star Wars. The Ewoks themselves and their forest moon home on Endor are just as we remember them. Aside from that, there's not much to make the film look like Star Wars. The character Mace Tawani wears an orange flight suit and carries a blaster, and there's one Star Cruiser, but that's about it. This sense of separation from the main Star Wars saga begs the question of when exactly the films are set, and there was initially a little bit of disagreement on that front. In an interview with Empire, star Eric Walker revealed that the original plan was to set the films decades after Return of the Jedi, completely separate from the main saga. Later, though, Lucasfilm placed the two Ewok adventures on the timeline between the events of The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, which means the Ewok Wicket and his friends were dealing with humans well before Princess Leia showed up. Caravan of Courage, the first Ewok adventure, is the story of Sindel and Mace Tuani. The young siblings find themselves stranded on Endor as their family starship crashes and their parents are abducted by a giant monster called the Gorax. We know the creature's name as well as the names of the Ewoks because the entire affair is narrated by none other than legendary singer and actor Burl Ives. Ives' cool, calm voice gives many of the Ewok-only sequences the feel of a nature documentary. Deej will use his skin glider to search for his missing sons. Though Mace is initially hostile toward the Ewoks, in part because he can't understand them, Sindel and Wicket become friends. The Ewoks then win Mace's trust by finding medicine for Sindel when she gets sick. It's here that magic first enters the picture, as the Ewoks take Sindel and Wicket to the mystical Ewok Logre, who shows them their parents in captivity at the fortress of the Gorax. Mace and Sindel beg the Ewoks for help, and a select few are chosen to travel to the Gorax's mountainous lair to stage a rescue with the help of some magical artifacts. The fantasy feel only deepens as Caravan of Courage heads into its third act. Our heroes discover everything from a wayfinding arrowhead hidden in a rock to giant spiders patrolling a massive web inside the Gorax's cave. When they eventually do reach the lair of the Gorax, Mace finds his parents in a giant wooden cage, and with the help of the Ewoks, manages to free them. While fleeing the Gorax, the Ewok Chuka Troke dies when rocks fall on him. Together with the humans, the Ewoks manage to kill the Gorax by causing it to fall into a pit, and Mace uses Chuka Troke's axe to take revenge for his fallen friend. Though there are hints of Star Wars here, the whole thing plays out much more like a fantasy adventure. If you'd never seen a Star Wars film before this one, you might not think the franchise has much to do with stars at all. Caravan of Courage proved to be a massive success, garnering 65 million viewers and two Emmy nominations and setting the stage for a sequel. At the request of his daughter, who was saddened by Chuka Troke's death, Lucas left out any Ewok fatalities in the second film, but everything else was wide open. Together, the creative team hashed out an even bigger fantasy saga that introduced a number of new threats and characters into Ewok lore. The result was Ewoks, The Battle for Endor, which aired on ABC almost a year to the day after the first film in November 1985. The Battle for Endor opens just as the Tawani family are preparing to depart Endor in their newly repaired starship. But things soon get ugly. A group of marauders led by the evil Tarek and his shape-shifting witch sidekick Charles storms the ship, murdering the entire family save for Sindel. Wicket, who's learned to speak broken English at this point, decides to keep Sindel safe no matter what. While wandering in the forest, Sindel and Wicket meet a super-fast rabbit-like creature named Teak. 
Teak shows them to the hut of Noah, a hermit who crash-landed on Endor years earlier and had no choice but to stay when he couldn't repair his own ship. Noah is angry at first to see strangers, even though one of them is a helpless child, but he agrees to look after Sindel and Wicket when they insist they have no place to go. Meanwhile, at the Castle of the Marauders, Charles tries to unlock the power of the fuel cell from the Tawani family spaceship because Tarek is convinced that it's magic and wants to exploit it for himself. When Charles can't do what he wants, Tarek orders her to find Sindel, believing she will know how to unlock it. Charles uses her magic ring, which allows her to change shape, to turn into a beautiful woman and lure Sindel into a trap. She takes the girl back to Tarek, who demands Sindel give him the power. When Sindel reveals she doesn't know how to do anything with the fuel cell, he throws Sindel in jail along with Charles, taking her ring. Meanwhile, Noah, Wicket, and Teak begin to plan a rescue mission. They infiltrate the Marauder's castle and free Sindel. Enraged, Tyrek frees Charl in bird form and launches a full-scale attack on the Ewok village. The creatures defend themselves much as they do in Return of the Jedi, using things like rolling logs as traps. As the Marauders keep coming, Noah powers up his ship, but Tarek recaptures Sindel. Noah demands a duel with Tarek, with Sindel's life on the line. And as they fight, Wicket uses his sling to hit the magic ring around Tarek's neck. With the ring destroyed, Tarek turns to Ash, and Charl is left in bird form forever with no ring to change her back. With the Marauders defeated, Sindel says goodbye to Wicket and leaves Endor on board Noah's starship. As we've already discussed, the Ewok adventure films are only loosely connected to the rest of the Star Wars universe. The decision to set them between Star Wars Episode 5 and 6, however, creates a number of interesting implications that the films never take the time to explore. The most obvious of these is that by the time of the Battle of Endor, Wicket speaks English frequently with Sindel. Sindel, safe now. In the film itself, this is simply to cut out the need for a narrator the second time around. If you think about it in a larger context, though, it makes you wonder why he never broke that skill out when he met Princess Leia a short while later. Even more broadly, why are the Ewoks so friendly with Sindel and Mace, but so hostile to Luke, Han, and Chewbacca when they meet them? Are they just spooked by weapons? Did the run-in with the Marauders make them nervous? When they first appear in Return of the Jedi, the Ewoks are depicted as a relatively simple, tree-dwelling people who've clearly defined a somewhat primitive culture for themselves. When it comes to their supernatural beliefs or religion, we know that they seem to worship C-3PO as a god upon seeing him. I do believe they think I am some sort of god. That suggests some kind of belief in a deity, but that's all the film really takes the time to give us. The Ewok movies presented a really interesting opportunity to expand on the creature's supernatural beliefs. Caravan of Courage in particular decided to take advantage of that opportunity and revealed new layers of the Ewok culture through the use of magic. The Ewok shaman Logre in particular seemed to have a real command of the magical arts, and before the caravan set out on its quest, he offered the Ewoks and their friends a series of sacred tokens tied to Ewok warrior legends. These tokens include a magic crystal with hypnotic powers, a magic candle that seems to summon light fairy creatures, a walking stick that can pass through magical barriers, and a rock which hides a magical arrowhead. The film never has time to expand on where these artifacts came from or how they work, but they all suggest a much deeper Ewok culture lurking beneath the surface of the films. The Star Wars heroes of the original trilogy spend a lot of time on Endor in Return of the Jedi, and over the course of that film, we get the impression that it would be a relatively peaceful planet if not for the Empire. The Ewoks clearly have weapons and know how to fight, but most of their weapons look more like what you'd use for hunting than a war. Outside of all that Imperial interference, they seem to have a pretty quiet and happy life in the trees. With the Empire out of the picture for the Ewok movies, Lucasfilm had to come up with other threats for the characters to fight and that's when it became clear that Endor is actually a pretty terrifying place to live. Even setting aside the main antagonist of each film, like the Gorax and the Marauders, there are a lot of terrifying, deadly creatures to contend with on the Forest Moon. In Caravan of Courage alone, the Ewoks and their human friends must contend with a massive beast called a Boar Wolf, the tree-dwelling trapper known as Temptor, and most memorably, gigantic spiders that dwell in a massive web inside the Gorax's mountain fortress. No wonder the Ewoks are so good with spears and slings. We've covered the plot, setting, and interconnected mythology of the Ewok adventure films, and now we arrive at the question of their present relevance. Are the Ewok adventures considered canonical? The short answer is no, which explains why we haven't seen a Blu-ray release yet. The longer answer is that for a long time, the films were considered a canonical part of the expanded universe, along with countless other stories that formed a mammoth Star Wars timeline. That all changed in 2014 when, after Disney purchased the company and launched new plans for the franchise, Lucasfilm revealed that the expanded universe as we knew it would draw to a close. This announcement meant that all stories previously produced, other than the six core Star Wars films and the Clone Wars animated series, were rendered non-canonical. 
However, the rollback also created an opportunity for old EU characters to be reintroduced later. That means that while the Ewok adventure films aren't canon anymore, there's always a chance someone could decide to throw something like the Gorax into a new tale. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about Star Wars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.